In this video, I'll cover how to set profile attributes and how to change attributes of existing profile members. I'll demonstrate profile attributes with a profile of an exterior wall. In top view, I'll create a rectangle, select it, and create a new profile called Exterior Wall. I'll set the width to 12 inches, then unlock the aspect ratio, and set the height to 12 feet. Now I can erase the rectangle. The material and layer attributes are set based on what's defined so far in the model. My only available material is the default material, and the only available layer is layer 0. If I want to assign the exterior wall its own material, that material needs to be added to the model. One way to add a material is to create a temporary face and paint it. I'll use one of the materials from the Bricks folder of the Materials window. If I erase this face, the material is still stored in the model, as I can see by opening my in-model materials. For PC users, another way to add a material is simply to right-click on a swatch and choose Add to Model. Now when I open the in-model materials, both swatches appear. Back in the Profile dialog, these materials are now available, and I'll choose this brick. Layers work the same way. I'll open my Layers window and click to add a new layer, which I'll name Exterior Walls. Now I can find this layer in the Profile dialog. I'll change the placement point to bottom left, click Build, and start dragging out walls. Because the default junction style is continuous, the entire set of walls is a single group. And I can see from the Entity Info window that this group is on the Exterior Walls layer. And even though this is a group, Profile Builder assigns the group a name identical to the profile name, Exterior Wall. With SketchUp's native tools, only components are assigned names, not groups. This naming helps when searching for a specific group in the Outliner, which I'll demonstrate a bit farther on. There are two other junction style options. If I switch to Miter Joint and draw out a new set of walls, the results look similar, but in this case, each wall is its own group. The third option is Butt Joint. Rather than create a new set of walls, I can edit the first set to have this junction type. I'll select the first set of walls, click Butt Joint, then click Edit Member Properties. The only property I want to change is Junction, so I'll check only that box and click Apply. Now these walls are individual groups with squared off edges. This type of junction style is particularly useful for carpentry models, where each board would be its own squared off group. The last attribute type is Extrude Mode. The default setting is Normal, which adds an edge at each profile member junction. If I change this to Follow Me and go back to the Continuous Junction style, the results will emulate what I'd get with the Follow Me tool, meaning no coplanar edges at the junctions. Edit Member Properties can be used to update any existing profile member with some or all of the properties currently set in the Profile dialog. Let's say I change the profile material to the other brick and add a vertical offset of 4 feet. I'm selecting only this profile member from the set of walls. After clicking Edit Member Properties, I can choose just Material and click Apply, which of course changes just the material and not the offset. Or I can undo that change, Edit again, and this time I can select both Material and Y Offset. Or I can just click All to accept all attributes currently in the Profile dialog. This time both the material and offset are changed. A profile member can also be changed to have a different profile altogether. I'll open my profile browser, go to the Samples folder, and choose Jersey Barrier. This profile comes in with its own concrete material and goes back to layer 0. I'll select this one group set of walls, edit, and change just the profile. The profile changes, but everything else stays the same. Same material, same layer. If I undo, edit again, and choose All Properties, I now have Concrete Jersey Barriers on Layer 0. The difference between extrude modes can also be seen when using 3D paths. In most cases, Normal is the ideal extrude mode, such as in this example of a rectangular profile and a spiral path. I'll use Smart Path Selection to define the path in advance, and with Normal Extrude Mode, here's the result when I click Build Along Path. The profile remains consistent and does not twist along the path. 
Displaying hidden edges makes it easier to see how each section progresses to the next. I'll switch to Follow Me Extrude mode, select the profile member, and edit member properties. I'll check Extrude mode, then Apply. Now the profile member does twist along the path. These results are exactly what I would see if I used Follow Me, with the rectangle meeting the profile at its lower left corner. For another example, I'll extrude a circular pipe profile along a complex 3D path. With normal extrude mode, I'll get some twisting in this section. If I switch to Follow Me, select the profile, and edit it to have the new extrude mode, the twisting is gone. For a more practical example of profile editing, I'll start with this model of a simple floor plan. I'll draw a generic rectangle for the exterior wall profile, as before, and select it. I'll make this rectangle a profile called Exterior Wall, unlock the aspect ratio, and set the dimensions of 6 inches by 11 feet. The placement point will be bottom left. I'll click Build and trace around the walls. Because junctions are continuous, the entire set of walls is one group, and normal extrude mode results in dividing edges at each junction. The wall thickness is inadequate. According to the plan, it should be 12 inches. I'd also like to change some other attributes. The only materials on the list are those already in the model, so I'll create a temporary rectangle and paint it with brick, and now that material appears on the list. I'll also create a layer for exterior walls, Select that from the layer list, and I'll also change the extrude mode to follow me. And I'll change the profile width to 12 inches. I'll now select the wall group, click Edit Member Properties, and I'll choose All to cover all of the different types of property changes. After clicking Apply, I have a thicker wall, brick material, no extra edges, and the walls are on their own layer. If I open the outliner, it's easy to find the group containing the profile member from among the other items on the list. Imagine a much more complex model than this one, and it's easy to see why naming groups is helpful. The filter option can be used to locate groups by name. Keep in mind that if I make any changes to these walls using SketchUp's native tools instead of Profile Builder, the parametrics of the profile members will be lost. An example of this type of change would be editing the wall group and adding edges for cutting openings, or using the paint bucket to change materials. Profile Builder has its own editing tools that maintain profile member parametrics. One example is the parametric hole cutting tool, which I'll show in a later video. In the next video, I'll add interior walls to this model and show some additional ways to edit profiles, profile paths, and profile members.